Good morning, everyone, and a happy Wednesday. My name is Nick Morrow with Occupy Fantasy. You can find me on Twitter at Nick Morrow DFS. As always, I am here to help you break down the NBA DFS slate on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, we have an eight-game slate tonight. I'd like to walk through game by game. If you haven't already, please like the video. Also, subscribe to the channel. That helps us climb up those YouTube algorithms and get more free content like this out to you. Also, uh, check the links in the description below. If you're not already a member at Occupy Fantasy, I recommend you come and join us today. You get access to the NBA model you see here that I'll be using throughout this video, where you could sort by OF Index, which is going to show you the best plays on a given slate, value for both DraftKings, FanDuel, ownership projections, um, and we also have a single lineup builder and a multi lineup builder. Uh, we have a private Discord server as well where you can access a bunch of DFS pros, including a 30 minute window leading up to each slate's lock where you can ask lineup specific questions. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the slate. Again, eight games, kind of a nice, sweet spot. Uh, not too big, not too small. Um, we do have a few teams on back to back, so we're waiting on a few injury reports. Um, but as always, I'll go through game by game, team by team, and talk through all the injuries injury situations and the plays that I'll be on. Um, so first we have the Chicago Bulls at the Washington Wizards at seven o'clock. Uh, the Wizards are going to be without Bradley Beal. Oh, forgot to, <laughs> to run through the spread here. Uh, the Wizards are one point underdogs at home, 230 point game total here. Uh, so the Wizards, like I just said, they're going to be without Bradley Beal. Kristaps Porzingis is questionable. Um, so first and foremost with Beal out, um, if Porzingis didn't have an injury designation, and if he's in, he's going to be a good play here. I uh, also really like Kyle Kuzma. Whenever Beal's out, both of these guys look really solid. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Daniel Gafford's been starting at center. He's been very productive. His price has continued to climb, uh, but I do like him here. Monte Morris seeing increased usage with Beal out of the lineup. Um, and then if Kristaps is out, I think Rui Hachimura becomes a really interesting play on both sides. 4,600 on DK, 5K over on FanDuel. Um, but yeah, the big news here is Kristaps Porzingis. I mean, if he's in, he's a good play, like I said, along with Kuzma. If he's out, Kuzma becomes kind of a top priority. Um, I really like him on FanDuel regardless regardless at 7,400. Um, but with Porzingis out, I'd like him at 8,500 on DK as well. I'm hoping people kind of look at his game log because he didn't have a good game last time out, but he was ejected, I believe, in the third quarter, um, which certainly capped his upside, obviously. Um, but again, if Porzingis is out, we're going to want more Daniel Gafford than we already do, a guy I like regardless, more Rui Hachimura. And then I do think Monte Morris is a fine guard option. Um, a little bit inconsistent, especially with Delon right back. Um, but yeah, he, he's not the worst. I think we do have better guard value regardless of whether Porzingis is in, but a spot you could certainly consider. Um, but yeah, priorities here are Kuzma Porzingis. If Porzingis is out, you could add Rui um, kind of as a tournament play and then Gafford as a priority play at center. Um, on the bull side, we have Lonzo Ball still out. No surprise there. The big news here is DeMar DeRozan is questionable. Um, yeah, if he's in, the Bulls are one of these teams uh, where there's a lot of good players in the starting lineup. It's tough to know on a given night who's going to be the guy to go off. I mean, Levine's really hot, light, hot right now. I like him a lot here. Um, but yeah, it's something we got to keep an eye on. Uh, Vooch looks good on both sites, priced reasonably. Not someone I think we have to force. There are a bunch of good center plays on this slate. Uh, but if DeRozan's out, then Levine and Vooch are going to be really tough to get away from, especially in a matchup against the Wizards. 230-point game total, just a really appealing spot. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye on this one. If DeRozan's in, I think he's fine. Um, out of the big three, I would favor Levine regardless. But if DeRozan's out, we really have to prioritize Levine and Vooch on both sides. So keep an eye on this one. Um, certainly some news we're waiting on on both sides of the ball with Porzingis and DeRozan. Two of the best players in this game are both questionable. Uh, the good news, though, is that this game is at 7 o'clock, so we should know that going into the slate. Um, moving into the next game, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves at the Detroit Pistons. The Timberwolves are seven-point favorites on the road in Detroit, 229 and a half point game total here. I'm going to start with Minnesota. Um, so yeah, the big piece of news here is that Anthony Edwards is currently listed as questionable. Um, left hip soreness. I wouldn't be surprised to see him sit, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see him play. Again, this is a seven o'clock game, so we should have that news. You don't have to really sweat too much. Um, 
other injury news here with Jordan McLaughlin still out. Carl Anthony Towns is still out. Uh, Luke Garza, not really a rotational player, but he's out as well. Um, so, I mean, Rudy Gobert is getting a ton of ownership on both sides. I do like him here. He's just a little bit too cheap for that upside. And if Edwards is out, he's going to see a bump in usage. And this is a very favorable matchup against a soft Detroit team whose entire front court is banged up right now. So really have to like Gobert here. He could have 15, 20 rebounds. It wouldn't shock me. Not that I'm necessarily projecting that, um, but he does does have that in his range of outcomes. So Gobert's going to be one of the better center plays on the slate as things stand. And then if Edwards is out, I think we have to prioritize Russell. Um, secondary options like Kyle Anderson, Jaden McDaniels, they'll all look good here as well. Um, Nas Reed does seem to be healthy, which is cut into McDaniels and Kyle Anderson a bit. But again, if Edwards is out, a ton of usage is going to be there um, for everyone. Uh, but as things stand, I do really like Gobert. I would kind of pencil him in as one of my favorite center plays. I'm going to do that on both sites now. I'm just going to slowly kind of build throughout this video, uh, just trying something new here. So bear with me on that. Um, but yeah, I really like Gobert. I really like Russell. If Edwards is in, I think he's viable. Uh, a little bit expensive on both sides, especially DK, where he's north of 9,100. But you see him drawing ownership. It's just an excellent matchup um, against Detroit, who is banged up right now. So on the Pistons side, they are on a back-to-back. -back. Uh, their injury report has not been released yet. Uh, yesterday, we saw... Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich sit. We saw Isaiah Stewart sit. Uh, just kind of looking through the starters here. If both of them are in, um, I think all the starters are okay options. Um, if Bogdanovich is out and Stewart's in, I really like Stewart here. Um, Jaden Ivey is a good play. Uh, Jalen Duren is likely going to be out here again for Detroit. Uh, Marvin Bagley is going to be out for several weeks. So they're just thin in the front court um, all around. So keep an eye on this. I mean, if Stewart or Duran are in and the other is out, um, whoever's left is going to look really good here. Um, and then if Boyan's out, I mean, we're seeing a lot of usage go to guys like Sadiq Bey, extra usage for Killian Hayes and Jaden Ivey. So while it's not a great matchup, and I certainly do favor the Timberwolves with or without Edwards to get the win here, um, it is a competitive enough spot where I think you could get some value out of Detroit, but definitely another spot we have to keep an eye on the news. I mean, as more guys are out, I could see maybe getting to Alec Burks. How many do Diallo had a massive game off the bench last night. I know because I was on him all day and then pivoted last minute when he came off the bench. Total mistake on my end. Um, but I do like Diallo here, but you will like him a lot more if Bogdanovich is out again. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the Stewart news. Um, and then Edwards is obviously a major, major um, decision point on Minnesota. If he's in, he's good. If he's out, um, Gobert's going to look even better, and D'Angelo Russell would become a priority. I could see getting to maybe Jalen Noel as well. Um, just the fewer guards, the better for D'Angelo Russell. Uh, we have seen a boost in his usage and minutes with Jordan McLaughlin out of the lineup. Um, so we can move into the next game on the slate now. Um, going by the official... Uh, NBA injury report and order of games. It's different on both sites, but we have the Pacers at the Knicks. The Knicks are four and a half point favorites at home, hosting Indiana. Uh, 227 and a half point game total here. So let's take a look over the injury report. I am seeing TJ McConnell is questionable. Aaron Naismith is questionable. Um, so yeah, maybe not the biggest names, but this could have a an effect on guys like Andrew Nemhard. Um, we could see more Benedict Mathur in here, who started the season really hot, but he's kind of come back down to earth. Uh, Nemhard is really going to be the big play here. If McConnell and Naismith are both out, I'll feel even better about his minutes. And where he's priced at just 3900 on DK, 4600 on FanDuel, I think regardless, he's kind of a relevant um, value option as things stand. So keep an eye on this one. Um, Halliburton obviously looks good. Don't mind Turner, healed. Any of the starters are okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could see getting to a lot of Halliburton. There are a ton of good guard plays on the slate, so we could go overlooked. Uh, Miles Turner, fine. Um, just kind of price where he should be. Better play on DK, but he healed. Scoring dependent, but he has been solid. So there's no Pacers I'm saying are really a priority. But if we get both McConnell and Naismith out, I do think Nemhard becomes one of the better value plays. So keep an eye on that piece. Um, over on the Knicks side, RJ Barrett's been out for a few weeks. Um, he's listed as questionable today. If he's in, that's going to cut into the upside of guys like Quentin Grimes and Emmanuel quickly. Um, if Barrett is out, 
I could see getting to Grimes and quickly once again. Uh, their prices are up as though Barrett's out, so they're going to become unplayable um, if R.J. Barrett returns. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Jalen Brunson, though, um, his price is up. He's just over 8K on both sites, but I still feel like he's too cheap. I think the field agrees with me. We're seeing him over 25% on both sites on these early ownership projections. So uh, definitely like Jalen Brunson here. Uh, Indiana is going to be a pace-up spot for these Knicks. Pretty soft matchup in terms of defense as well. So love me some Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle looks fine. He's over 10K on both sites. There are other payups on the slate I do prefer, um, but I'm not mad if you land on some Julius Randle. And Mitchell Robinson, as always, is a good boomer bust option at center. Never draws much ownership. Wide range of outcomes, very low floor, but also a high ceiling, which makes him kind of a prototypical tournament play. So. I do like Mitchell Robinson here, uh, but really keep an eye on that Barrett news. I mean, if he's out, we could go back to quickly and a little bit less so Grimes. But if he's in, those two kind of become unplayable. Regardless, I do like Jalen Brunson a lot here. Um, so we can move into the next game on the slate now. We have the Atlanta Hawks at the Milwaukee Bucks. One of my favorite games on the slate to target tonight. Um, the Bucks are two and a half point favorites on the road in Atlanta. 236 point game total here, so very high total. Um, on the Milwaukee side, which is where I'm going to start, we still have no Chris Middleton. Uh, Serge Ibaka is out as well for personal reasons. Um, but yeah, I mean, the big piece here is Giannis. He's the top OF index play on the slate. Looks excellent, drawing a lot of ownership as he should. He's had some massive, massive games over the course of the past week or so. Um, and with Capella still out for Atlanta, this is a softer matchup in the front court than it typically would be. Uh, Chris Middleton's still out, which means Drew Holiday is going to be playable. We're getting him at sub 8K on both sites. Um, he's someone I can see penciling in if you're not getting to Giannis. Like in any lineup, I don't have Giannis. I'm only playing like five to 10 single entry lineups. I've been doing a lot of hand building lately but I do like Giannis and if he's not in my lineup maybe I go to Drew so let's take a look at the prices here I mean uh, they're almost the same on both sites um, Giannis a little bit cheaper on FanDuel Drew a little bit cheaper on DK so maybe we build like this I'll for now go Giannis on FanDuel Drew over on DK but really I do consider Giannis to be the best pay up option on the board tonight so um, if you could fit him I would uh but yeah, if you're not playing Giannis, maybe get Drew, uh, something like that. So I do really like the Bucks here. I don't mind Lopez or Portis as secondary options, even Grayson Allen, if we don't get more value to open up. Pat Connington's dirt cheap. If he starts, you could use him as a punt. He's drawing ownership. Uh, never someone I'm excited to play, but certainly someone you could use as kind of a last man in. Um, over on the Atlanta side, no Clint Capella. That's really the one big piece of news. Uh, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray both look fine. Not rushing to get to either of them. Trey, obviously, the higher ceiling. Murray, obviously, a little bit cheaper. Uh, they both look good. Uh, John Collins might be on the trade block. Uh, Atlanta says they want a Rudy Gobert-like haul for him if they do trade him, so it doesn't seem like they're serious about moving him. Uh, but at the same time, he's looked excellent over the past few weeks, so I do like Collins on both sites. Uh, definitely feels too cheap, and he's not drawing much ownership. So John Collins is a play I like here. Um, and then with Clint Capella out, once again, we could go to Onyeka Okongwu. Some foul risk against Giannis here, but he's not really a guy you typically see get in foul trouble. Uh, so I do like Okongwu. Um, and I do like John Collins. Obviously, the guards are good plays, but I do think with Capella out, you're getting more value out of that front court. So another decent spot. Uh, maybe I pop Collins in here over on TK. Let's see, forward. Yeah, 6,900 is too cheap. Um, and just a bit of advice. I mean, as I'm building this, Collins pops into that forward spot. But you want the guys in the later games to fill the guard forward and utility if you do have players playing in the later games. It just gives you more uh, maneuverability and ability to swap if you need to. So something just to keep in mind. But again, I love Giannis here. And lineups I don't have Giannis, I'm going to get some Drew. Um, and then all the Atlanta starters look good, like the guards. But the front court is really what's... Uh, getting me more excited tonight. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, moving into the next game, we have the Celtics hosting the Pelicans. The Celtics are, Celtics are nine and a half point favorites at home. Uh, the spread open at 10, it is closing a bit. Um, we see Marcus Smart listed as questionable. Robert Williams is questionable as well uh, for Boston. So let's take a look there first. I mean, if Smart's out again, we'll probably see um, Derek White got the start last time. Brogdon's been good coming off the bench, but with Smart out, both of those guard plays are going to see a boost in usage. Um, so they'll look good here. If Robert Williams is out, obviously that's a boost for Horford. Um, but the bigger boost lately has been for Grant Williams, even coming off the bench. We see him drawing no ownership here, and he is a risky option, but 
if we don't get a lot of good value throughout the day, I do think Williams is kind of a sneaky good play. I'll just bring him up quickly in the game logs. Um, you shouldn't really game log watch, but he's coming off a massive game. Um, a lot of people were on him, and then they pivoted when he came off the bench, but he went for 20 real points, eight rebounds in 36 minutes. So Williams could be heavily involved here, especially if we get smart and then uh, Williams out. So keep an eye on that one. Obviously, Tatum and Brown are good plays if you could afford them. I'm not necessarily prioritizing either. Uh, it is a good matchup. There is some small blowout risk here, but lately, if you try to predict a blowout, it's like the other team wins the game. So maybe don't look too deep deeply into that um but over on the pelican side we do have some value for sure uh just clicking over um so still no ingram still no zion and now herbert jones is out as well so as has been the case these last few slates cj mccollum looks good here if this is going to be a competitive game he's going to have a very good night in my opinion uh don't mind joe val certainly better on dk where you're getting him sub 7k uh, Najee Marshall's price is up, um, but he's been excellent, like him on both sites. Uh, really like him at forward on DK, where forward is a very thin pers- position once again. So uh, probably going to get some Najee Marshall on both sites. I do prefer him over on DraftKings, where he's a bit cheaper and it's harder to find forwards. Um, where are they? Yeah, the order of the games on the two sides are very different. So that's that. But yeah, he's sliding into... I don't know, the utility there, I don't like that. But like I said, um, he is a good play. I'd probably want him up here somewhere, but that's neither here nor there. Um, So I do like McCollum. I do like Marshall. Trey Murphy should see a nice boost uh, with Herbert Jones out of the lineup. If Dyson Daniels gets the start, he's going to be really appealing guard value. Um, Keep an eye on that one. I'm going to plug him into FanDuel right now. Uh, But yeah, if he's not starting... He certainly becomes a little bit riskier, but we've seen some really good games out of him. And surprisingly for an eight-gamer, we don't have a ton of great value yet. Uh, Daniel's very scoring dependent, uh, but with Herb Jones out, we could see him start along CJ um, or Jose Alvarado in that backcourt. So something to keep an eye on. I I don't even want to pencil him in. I I don't like him that much. Uh, But if he starts and we don't get more value throughout the day, he's someone I'm considering. Um, I do like Alvarado, though. I don't know that he's popping in the model very highly. Um, but yeah, he is drawing ownership on FanDuel, rightfully so. Uh, sub sub 5K, uh, he should be okay, even if this game does get a bit out of hand. He's not the first guy off the floor in a blowout or anything like that. So I do like Alvarado as a value play at guard. Um, but again, CJ is going to look excellent here. As long as both Zion and Ingram are out, this is his offense. Um, so he's a really strong play. But the biggest news here we're waiting on is on the Boston side. Definitely keep an eye on Williams. Um, keep an eye on Marcus Smart as well, because um, there's not going to be one huge value play that kind of pops up out of nowhere, but everyone else for Boston is going to look better if those guys are out. Uh, Moving into the next game on the slate, we have the Memphis Grizzlies at the San Antonio Spurs. Um, The Grizzlies are 13 and a half point favorites at home hosting San Antonio. Very widespread here. Um, Ja Morant is back. Um, It looks like Brandon Clark is out. Danny Green's still out. So no major, major news. Um, but yeah, obviously a good matchup against the terrible Spurs. Don't mind getting to some jaw. Jaron Jackson's been really good. Bain, big disappointment last time with jaw out of the lineup. Uh, but I could see going back to him in tournaments. Steven Adams, uh, much better on DK at 6K, but he's a decent center play. And then Dylan Brooks, high ceiling, low floor, scoring dependent. Um, He's fine here. Um, So the Grizzlies are all okay. They all look good. They're all kind of priced where they should be, though. Over on the Spurs side of the ball, we do have to keep an eye on Keldon Johnson, who is listed as questionable. Uh, Devin Vassell is going to be out for a while, um, undergoing a knee procedure, which provides a boost to Trey Jones. I like Trey Jones on both sides. He's going to be better if Keldon Johnson's out. But regardless, I do think he's a good play here. Um, If Keldon Johnson's in, he's really strong. Uh, Whenever you get him in with Vassell out, he is especially appealing. Um, so keep an eye on that one. Uh, Jakob Podol is finally seeing minutes over 30 again consistently. So he's another good center option, but not someone I'm prioritizing in a tough matchup against Memphis. So a good game. If there is a priority here for me, it's Trey Jones. Um, but yeah, really nothing I'm forcing or considering a core play uh, for Memphis or San Antonio. Uh, then we have a little break and we move into the 10 o'clock window. Uh, Moving at a very nice pace today. Uh, We have two more games on the slate here. Uh, First, we have... hmm, There's kind of an error in this injury report. Uh, No worries. Okay, so we have the Houston Rockets at the Sacramento Kings. 
Um, the Rockets have nobody significant on the injury report. That's why I'm not seeing them. Um, so, yeah, everyone's healthy right now. I think Sangoon's a good play on both sides. Uh, 6,300 is just too cheap for his upside in this matchup. Kevin Porter, Jalen Green, I like one or the other. Probably wouldn't use both in the same lineup, even with the high total here at 237.5. Um, I like both of them, not forcing either necessarily. Uh, but those are really the three plays I like a lot from Houston. Um, I think Jabari Smith is fine as a secondary option. Could see maybe getting to some Eric Gordon as the last man in. But he's very risky and inconsistent. Um, so Sengun's definitely my favorite rocket, followed by Porter and Green. Um, they're kind of tied. Uh, Porter a little bit more upside, but also a little bit more expensive. So a lot to like on Houston, um, generally speaking. Uh, but the only plays I'm really targeting are Green, Sengun, and Porter. Um, Sacramento, they've been good this year, but they do give up a lot of fantasy points. Um, on the Sacramento side of the ball... Uh... Yeah, for whatever reason, they're not on this injury report. Um, so we got to keep an eye on that. Uh, but as things stand, I'll say this. I do like Sabonis. I do like, like Fox a lot. They're both solid plays here. Fox, a bit more inconsistent compared to the other top guard plays on the slate. Um, but you're getting him at a nice discount in an excellent matchup. Uh, Sabonis, 9,900 on FanDuel certainly feels too cheap. I like him a lot here. I am prioritizing Giannis tonight. But if you can fit Sabonis with Giannis, I think that's a pretty good way to start your builds on the high end. So, um Really good plays there. Uh, just a really great game environment. Another guy I like a lot is Harrison Barnes. Um, not really known as a fantasy producer, but he is always a bit too cheap, and he almost always seems to hit value. So I do like Barnes here at 5,800 on FanDuel. I'm guessing we're looking at a similar price on DK. Yep exact same price. So I like Harrison Barnes on both sides. Really good spot. Um, you kind of see these lineups coming together. Like I said, uh, you don't want to leave those bottom spots open. Um, I mean, you want those bottom spots to be filled by the later guys, uh, just so you have room to pivot if you need to. Uh, but yeah, Sacramento, Houston, both look good. They're both pretty healthy. I'm not seeing the Kings on the injury report. They must have not released their injury report yet. Um, no big deal, though. Uh, just keep an eye on that if anyone is ruled out. I mean, uh, just a couple other secondary plays I'll touch on. Monk's fine as a boom bus guard play, very scoring dependent, not someone I'm prioritizing. Is drawing a lot of ownership on DK at 4,400. Um, has a high ceiling, so I get it. Um, and then Keegan Moore Murray is too cheap on DK as well. I don't mind him as a forward if you're desperate. Um, pretty inconsistent, but he has been seeing more minutes lately. So another play I could see getting to. Um, last game on the slate, we have... The Suns at the Nuggets. The Nuggets are 13-point favorites at home. Um, so this one's interesting. Phoenix is on a back-to-back. -back. They are very banged up right now. Uh, so both Booker and Paul are probably going to be out again tonight, which is going to create opportunity for Dwayne Washington again, who looked great last night, but also Landry Shamet. I mean, Shamet was questionable. He got ruled out late. If he's back, he's going to be a really solid guard option here. He's going to be the only Phoenix Sun on fresh legs um, in that backcourt, so I would like him. Uh, same story for DeAndre Ayton. He got the rest last night. If he's in here, I do think he's a good play. Um, but yeah, if those guys are out again, we're going to have to look to Bridges. We're really going to have to look to Dwayne Washington. Dario Saric went off last night. was surprising to me. But if he's in the starting lineup again, I do like him as a value play. Um, obviously, some blowout risk here at... Uh, 13 point spread but at the same time I mean they just don't have the bodies so I do think you can get to some Phoenix for value without worrying too much about the game script um, really like Bridges uh, he's coming off a massive game Dwayne Washington has shown that he's a very aggressive scorer much more appealing on TK where he's only 4600 5700 on FanDuel is a tough pill to swallow especially if Shemet's in the lineup if Shemet's in I prefer him on both sites but if Shemet's out I do like Washington everywhere uh, Damian Lee as well he had a pretty good game last night another guard value play you could consider um, so there's a lot to like for phoenix it's just a terrible matchup so i'm kind of hoping we get more value throughout the day but if we don't i imagine we're gonna have a lot of phoenix sun here uh suns here rather um and just to touch on this front court really frustrating last night uh the suns posted their lineup with jock landell as the starter um Everyone had them starting Landell. The beat reporters, the official Suns website, all the sites that aggregate news, they all had Landell as the starter. Then Biombo tipped off at center. So keep an eye on that. If Aiton's out, um, I'm thinking he plays tonight on the second half of the back-to-back, -back, um, but we have to keep an eye on that. Still no injury report for the Suns. Um, but proceed with caution in that front court because... 
yeah, it seems they're listing lineups and then doing whatever they want after the fact. So hopefully the Suns get fined. Um, hopefully Aiton's in and we don't have to deal with this mess. Um, then over on the Denver side, as is always the case, uh, Nikola Jokic looks great here. Uh, Bruce Brown is probable. Jeff Green's out. Bones Highland probable. Zeke Nagy probable. So no real injuries here. Obviously, Jokic's going to look good on both sides. Really soft matchup, even if Aiton is in. Um, getting pretty low ownership on him, sub 12K on both sides. So he's an appealing tournament play. I'd much rather get to Giannis in what is sure to be a competitive game against Atlanta. Uh, but at the same time, if you're getting Joker at like half or the, a third of the ownership, obviously that's a smart GPP pivot. Uh, don't mind Murray. Aaron Gordon looks good here. Michael Porter Jr. Caldwell Pope. I mean, they're all fine plays. They're all kind of priced where they should be, though. No one I'm really rushing to other than Jokic in tournaments. Um, and then Murray at 6,900 on DK does feel a bit too cheap. AK on FanDuel, not really someone I'm interested in. Um, but yeah, something to consider for sure. So, oh, email pops up. Ignore that. Um, just going back to the model now. I'm just going to take a real kind of general overview of the slate. Uh, sorting by OF index, which is mostly a weight on upside combined with uh, price and ownership. But yeah, it's really just showing us the best raw point plays. I mean, Giannis looks the best, followed by Jokic. No surprise there. Sabonis in that excellent matchup against Houston. Like I said, if I can, I'm starting lineups with the two of them. It's going to be tough, though, unless we get more value. Uh, like John Morant in the soft matchup against the Spurs. Um, and then Porzingis is a big piece of news. If he's in, he's good. If he's out, Kuzma is going to become a priority because Bradley Beal has already been ruled out for the Wizards. Love me some CJ McCollum. Uh, tough matchup against Boston, but if that game stays close, he's going to probably have 50 plus fantasy points. Um, and then we look at Anthony Edwards. Good play if he's in. If he's out, Russell becomes a priority. We already like Gobert a lot. Um, so quickly sorting by ownership. I've seen Gobert and Brunson popping on FanDuel. Torian Prince getting a lot of love. I would prefer to see him starting before I go there for value. So keep an eye on that. Um, I prefer Kyle Anderson, but he's also a little bit more expensive. But they're both pretty popular on both sites, so something to certainly keep an eye on. Um, as is always the case, you could find me on Twitter at Nick Morrow DFS. I'm here with Occupy Fantasy. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, check the links in the description below to join Occupy Fantasy today. And let's have some fun tonight, everyone and make some money. Good luck.